I call the member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Temporary Speaker. And as always, it's great to be here talking about the uh, new Maitland Hospital. And uh, I rise to speak on the petition of over 25,000 people um, who have called on the government to publicly own and operate the new Lower Hunter Hospital. After seven years, Mr Temporary Speaker, three Premiers and two Health Ministers, the people of Maitland have finally got the outcome that they fought so hard for. Now, just before Australia Day, what better day? In fact, I think we should rename it Maitland Hospital Day, because that is the day that these people in my community won the debate that we want a fully Australian public health system in this state. And that was the, just the day before, Mr. Minister Hazard had announced that the planned privatisation of the new hospital would be abandoned. Now, this is a great, great victory. It's a victory of people power over an agenda that members over on that side of the House fought tooth and nail to reject. In fact, the member for Upper Hunter, it's all very well for the Order. member for Tweed to say that Order. he wants a public hospital. He got one. Order. because. Member for Maitland, would you put your comments through? I did. I was saying, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Temporary Speaker, it's all very well for the member for Tweed to be talking about this because his was never at risk of privatisation. But the member for Upper Hunter, whose community, whose constituents will be using the new Maitland Hospital, he was up here and tried to tell a gallery full of people that it was a good thing for them to have a PPP. And now, lately, Come lately, we know that the government has said that they agree. They understand that a PPP was not the way forward for their community. And why is that not the case? Well, we've got five public hospitals that the former health minister announced back in 2016 that she was going to uh, privatise. Why on Goulburn, Shell Harbour, Barrel and Maitland? And I have to pay significant tribute to the member for Wyong, the member for Shell Harbour, who is here with me today, who fought with me and their communities and my community to ensure that this travesty against public health in our community did not take place. But there is still one more PPP in this state, and that is, of course, the one in the minister's own electorate, and that is the one on the northern beaches. Now, during this debate, we had that member from the other place, Scott MacDonald, telling me, as late as the 30th of November, that the new Maitland Hospital was going to be a PPP with an NFP, and that was it. Lay down the zair, all finished and done. He refused, as Parliamentary Secretary of the Hunter, to listen to our community and to get those wishes and thoughts back to the Health Minister. In fact, the Health Minister will say, and I see he's getting there ready to wind up, that I have been lobbying him hard on this issue for the whole time he has been Health Minister. So where has Scott MacDonald been there? The truth is you cannot trust the Liberals because Scott MacDonald is one of those people, he will be there when, at the next election, at the next election, he will be up there trotting out the private hospitals, the better thing for you, just like he did for the last three years. And we've got to reject that model. We have got real issues coming up with that Northern Beaches Hospital. They've got transitions. A lot of staff have said to us they still don't know if they've got a job to go to less than nine months out from the hospital opening its doors to the public. The government's abandoned the Manly and Monavale hospitals by not replacing staff. In fact, those hospitals... Uh, Minister, point of order, if you, if you want to step back. I want to talk about the hospital in my electorate. She should do so by substantive motion. This is about a petition to do with her, her community, which I'm happy to talk about. She should stick to it. She's just being a little silly at the moment. Thank you, Minister, uphold, for your feedback. Always appreciated from you. Very much. I'll uphold the, uh, the point of order. Member for Maitland, if you come back to the uh, leave of the petition. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr Temporary Speaker. I want to say, on, in relation to the hospital in my community, that we sent a message to the Premier, we sent a message to the Health Minister, not just this one, the one before him, that our community would not accept anything other than a public hospital. I want to thank the Maitland Community Unions Alliance, the New South Wales Nurses and Midwives Association, the Health Services Union, the Australian Salaried Medical Officers Federation, the Retired Re Unionist Network and Unions New South Wales for their unwavering support in this fight. And I want to urge the Minister and I want to urge this Government to reject out of hand. Do not turn your backs 
on the good decision that's now been made after seven years. We need hospitals in our state to remain public forever and ever. Thank you. Well I thank the member for Maitland. I call the minister. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr Acting Speaker, I should say, Mr Acting Speaker. Well, obviously, um, as the member for Maitland has just uh, observed, um, the uh, government um, has uh, uh, delivered on uh, a promise to ensure that there will be a new hospital at Maitland. Um, the uh, former minister, quite properly, uh, indicated that she would look at an, a range of options uh, to try and deliver <coughs> the best possible hospital facilities to Maitland and indeed other areas. Uh, she indicated that would be looked at, assessed. That is what's happened. Um, this government has the benefit of being a very effective government in terms of ensuring that the economy is such that we can actually build the infrastructure that's necessary for our hospitals, for our roads, for our schools. I was here for 16 years and watched the economy of uh, the former Liberal government absolutely decimated by the former Labor government. And over those years, it became uh, more and more obvious that they were completely incapable of managing the state's economy. And as a result, despite their best intent, they were incapable of delivering the hospitals and the roads and the schools. And indeed, I recollect a discussion with a senior minister about the fact that, uh, and I won't name the minister. And for Maitland, you have a point of order? Minister, if you'd like to step yes, up. Point of order, uh, Mr. Timmery Speaker. The petition is about the Maitland Hospital. It's not about the uh, excellent management of the former Labor government of schools, roads, and hospitals. I think I would ask you that you. That's certainly right. Thank, thank you. About the excellent management. I would ask that you ask the minister to return to thank the leave of you the have debate. Thank you. You have this little excellent. Ha, you're right. Well, she's certainly right. There was no excellent management. Absolutely not. <laughs> but as a result. Um, of the management of the state over the last seven years. The economy has turned around and we therefore are able to deliver um, a lot of the infrastructure that was missing for 16 years. And Maitland Hospital was one of our priorities. And uh, so over the last uh, year or so, the government has weighed up the issues and looked at it, listened to the community's uh, um, desires, what they'd like for Maitland. And as a result, uh, the government was able to make a, an informed decision, a balanced decision, um, which uh, has seen uh, the announcement, uh, as the Honourable Member just indicated on uh, I think the day before Australia Day, um, that we will be getting on with building the Maitland Hospital as a fully public model. Now, that hospital, of course, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, Member for Maitland, uh, I didn't hear her actually say today uh, thank you to the government for, uh, for actually meeting with each of her constituents, as I did on many occasions. Uh, she didn't mention thank you for the fact that uh, she was given an open door in my office to actually come in and talk about the issues. She didn't mention she didn't mention that the constituents she didn't mention that the constituents were given a very good hearing on the issues. She didn't mention that uh, um, after listening to those uh, range of views, the government did make an informed decision, and that is for the people of Maitland, great news that they're getting a uh, fantastic new hospital. Um, a uh, $450 million commitment to the people of the Lower Hunter area. And I must say I want to congratulate the people of the Hunter, not necessarily the local MP who has been, up until now, reasonably balanced, but today just a little bit overly enthusiastic and a little bit silly. But I want to congratulate the people of uh, the uh, Lower Hunter for coming and having their discussions with me and with the government about the deliberations of what they would like. I want to also thank uh, the various representatives, the nurses, the midwives, and indeed the union, the, the, the midwives and the nurses, and the midwives the union, and a range of others, medical practitioners, the, uh, the medical staff council in Maitland. They've been fantastic. I went up there, I met with them, I sat with them, uh, talked to them, and indeed we had a, a fantastic public meeting where the uh, the honourable member was behaving far better than she is today, um, and she was fair and reasonable on that occasion. And as a result. Um, the fair and reasonable approach has got a fair and reasonable outcome. So, Madam Mr Deputy Speaker, the government, of course, is delivering now about $7.7 .7 .7 billion worth of infrastructure to hospitals over the next four years. It is, it is, it has never been the case in the history of New South Wales that so much money is going to hospitals. 
I just want to say congratulations to the people of Maitland. We're looking forward to working with you. You know, we've already started the works last year, the preparation works. I've instructed the uh, health in infrastructure people to get on with it as quickly as possible, and I hope to see some works on the substantive buildings commence before the end of the year. Fantastic. I thank the Minister. We're, we're considering the petition, 10,000 petitioners or more. I call the member for the <coughs> Harbour. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I'd like to start off by congratulating the member for Maitland on the hard work that she has done on behalf of her community. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge every nurse, every doctor, every resident and every person who gave their time uh, in these five hospitals to ensure that our public hospital stays in public hands. Speaker, um, I have you know, been involved in a lot of campaigns during my time and I have to say that this campaign that was run by the community in relation to their hospital just went uh, to show you how uh, wide and how deep the residents and the community felt about the Americanisation of our healthcare system. Uh, it, well, it, it's not rubbish. Uh, this, this government simply cannot be trusted when it comes to health. Uh, whether you're at the state level or the federal level. It's in your DNA. You do not like public health. You've always opposed it. But I can tell you this. Uh, I can tell you this, that if you think that the constituents and the people of New South Wales are going to be happy about privatising our public hospitals, uh, then you, you, you need to think again. Uh, and I think you should remember this failure, because uh, I'm telling you now, we won't forget and we will continue to fight uh, until we ha have a guarantee from the New South Wales Government that they will not privatise any more hospitals in New South Wales. Uh, and that campaign will, will continue to go. This can never happen again. Our state citizens will oppose the Americanisation of our healthcare system. I think you should be getting that message pretty loud and clear by now. Point of order. Point of order. Member for Harbour. Um. Minister. I'm hearing it, but it's like white noise. I'm just wondering if the member could speak about the issue of Maitland rather than her broader issues and her old class warfare desires. Right. If she could just talk about the issue of Maitland. That's what the petition I'll is. The That's what the standing orders require. Maitland. Maitland. Talk about Maitland. Thank you, uh, she speaker. may not know Thank where Maitland I've, is. I've, I don't I've think she's been to Maitland. Tell us about the, uh, Maitland. Uh, I've already, uh, already spoken about Maitland. Uh, but oh, but uh, and I'll thank the member for Maitland. I'll thank the member for Maitland. Sit down. Sit down. That's what all you hear. Sit The community of the Minister. The community of Shell Harbour Speaker uh, was told in 2015 by the member for Kiama and the then, and the then Health Minister. Order, no, no, no. The petition has nothing to do with the community of Shell Harbour. It's about Maitland. And uh, I ask you, uh, Mr Acting Speaker, to the petition. The, the petition, uh, member for Karingai, actually does cover the um, privatisation of, of Thank health you. services. Um, Speaker, Speaker, the citizens of New South Wales have been absolutely tormented by that lot opposite. They've tormented the living daylights out of every single citizen in New South Wales with their privatisation agenda, their failed council amalgamations Speaker, and now the privatisation of our public hospitals. Speaker. We're considering a petition of ten. They are, they're selling you that. Right. We're considering a petition of 10,000 people or more signatories, and I'd like to call the member for the tweet. Thank you, uh, Mr Temporary Speaker. I rise to support the Health Minister on this uh, discussion, I guess debate, about the um, a Maitland uh, Hospital. Um, and in fact, uh, I'm a bit complexed, really, uh, Mr Temporary Speaker. I mean, any announcement, and I've gone through one, as the House knows, a, a significant investment in my local health system that improves the lifestyle, that people would complain and criticise. I mean, you're getting $450 million for the state-of-the-art emergency side medical... Uh, uh, look, we have, I fought many years under Labor to actually 
get the hospital. And I, you know, and I can see how big effect this is. I look in the gallery and I see how much interest that you've actually generated, and how many people. I mean, in all honesty, I think I think the clue to the whole lot is is exactly what the health minister said: responsive to the needs of the people of New South Wales. But I cannot help but move away from the fact. I sat here for four years in opposition. I saw the waste. I'm talking about the, the Metro uh, 500 million, I saw T card 100 million dollars, I saw all that particular waste. It wasn't until a national Liberal government came in that had firm, that had firm economic policies that sure, ensured that funds were here. I look on the other side, I mean there's a number of faces there I saw in the last election campaigning against recycling of assets, saying it was terrible, the roof was going to fall in. Without that, you wouldn't have this massive amount, a record amount being invested in the house. And full credit to the Treasurer, full credit to the Health Minister here. What, what? What part am I missing here? Why are you dissatisfied? The government is spending $450 million on a hospital in your electorate that's going to improve the lifestyle of your people, and you complain about it? Point of order. I'll get next money when we're in. My Maitland has a point of order. Chamber of Speaker, can we please direct his questions through the door, through the, through the, <laughs> door, through the chair, and, uh, and not attack me for defending my community well, obviously, you want to remember the Maitland. Thank you, Member for Maitland. Thank you, Member for Maitland. I'll hold that. Member for Tweed. Member for Tweed. Member for Tweed. Member for Tweed. The member for Maitland doesn't stand up to the rhetorical the questions and because they've got a very deep edge. But once again, I'm just absolutely amazed that somebody would complain that their hospital is getting $450 million up. You are complaining about it here. I've heard the statements from you. I've heard the statements from Maitland. I've heard the statements from the member of Shell Harbour. I'm just absolutely gobsmacked. I'm sure the people, if they heard that, that you were complaining that the government's spending that amount of money in the electorate and it's a problem. Member for Maitland. I have my head in shame. You're absolutely shocked. Is no. leave granted? No, it is granted. It is granted. No, leave because we've been here. Yeah, well, you know what? Why well, I don't want to give leave because I'm not actually agreeing. I've got a new, a new arrangement for a hospital. They shouldn't be carrying away. He's not a member. I'd family. like leave to be granted. Wait to hear what I say. Thank you. Is leave granted? Is leave granted? Yes. Thank you. I call the member for Wyle. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I thank those on the other side for the indulgence. Um, Mr. Mr. Temporary Speaker, I rise today in support of uh, Maitland and the people uh, who have fought for Maitland Hospital. But I also want to recognise that uh, the minister, because the minister uh, was able to break free from the uh, ideological restraints that were put in front of him uh, by previous people, the previous Premier and the previous Minister. And I have to say that this Minister did listen. He listened in Wong, he listened in Shell Harbour, he listened in Maitland. Order. Public health. Order. Public health. Public health is one of the most important pillars of government. And I know I visited the electorate of Maitland and attended several rallies uh, with people from, from my area as well. I visited Shell Harbour as well. And one of the most important things people thought, whether it was on the street, whether it was at those rallies, was that our public hospitals should be owned and operated uh, publicly. And that was, at, that was at the absolute root of the issue. What people said was that, particularly in our communities that actually uh, fundraised when, when the hospitals were originally built, that they felt a personal ownership over those facilities. Now, I know health is a very difficult portfolio area and how you fund it is a very difficult issue. But there are some things, some things that the public believe governments should do 100 per cent. And public health is one of those. They understand there must be public hospi uh, private hospitals, they understand that, and they, they can work in partnership. But 
there should always be fully owned and operated public hospitals. Now, the government has reached this decision, and the, the unfortunate part was, through the process, and I don't, I don't blame the current minister for this, but through that process, the anxiety that was caused to all of the staff members, to all of those community members, um, but particularly the staff members, because they were worried about their futures. They didn't know if they could go out, for example, and this is what they told me, and get a loan. They didn't know who or where they might be working in the next 12 to 18 months. And so when governments make these decisions, they also have to recognise there are severe impacts on people who work in the system, in people who use the system, and they have to take that into account. Now, I know in all of our communities, they are now thankful that their hospitals will remain public. They're happy that we took up the fight on their behalf in this place to represent their views, but they also recognise, they also recognise that the government did end up listening, and we, we do appreciate that. The discussion on 10,000 signatures petitions having concluded.